Binks rifles over the line to Ray Matthews. Matthews laterals to Mo Jaleski, and the mighty man from Maryland, Bull, dozes down to the Eagles' 45-yard line. In the last period, the Steelers are again in the move. Binks passes complete to Fran Rogel for 16 yards, a first down on the Eagle 11-yard line. On Saturday night, Forbes Field in Pittsburgh provides the stage for a startling performance by a host of gridiron greats as the Cleveland Suns and the hometown Steelers tangle in a sixth thriller. Airwave wizardry on the part of Otto Graham gets the Browns away on the right foot. Marion Mockley shags Graham's transcontinental toss and rumbles the rest of the way for a 67-yard scoring play, which with Gross's conversion gives Cleveland a 7-0 lead. Later in the first quarter, Graham fades into his end zone to pass, but Ed Kissel intercepts the Steelers on the Browns' 11. Assuming that opportunity strikes but once, the Steel City 11 catches in right away on a payoff pitch from Jim Finks to Albie Nichol. Cleveland again pressing the attack with Graham trying to locate the touchdown trail on a long pass. But Pittsburgh's Jack Butler throws up the detour sign, tries to root more to his liking that winds up in the Browns' 30-yard line. Pittsburgh parlays their pilfered pass into a six-pointer as Jim Finks connects with Albie Nickel in the end zone, and Pittsburgh holds a surprising halftime edge of 13-7 over the Browns. It's a new quarter, but the same old trouble for Cleveland as Otto Graham's pitch is plucked out of the air by the Steelers' Ed Kissel and returned 18 yards to the Browns' 21. Failing by six points, Cleveland keeps their airborne offense in action. Graham tossing this time to Dub Jones. Jones bounces the ball off Butler's bean, but recovers on the Cleveland 42. The Cleveland club will have no part of the six-point deficit that glares at them on the scoreboard, and doing their part to even the count are Otto Graham and Sherman Howard, who complete a 58-yard touchdown play. The score nodded at 20 all. Luke Rose's conversion is true blue, and the Browns come from behind to stop the stubborn Steelers 21 to 20. Chai Park was the battleground as the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers met their traditional rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles, in their second meeting of the year. Early in the first quarter, the Steelers' Pat Brady drops back in front formation. He gets away a long, spiraling boot that Don Stevens gathers in on his own 38. Behind beautiful blocking, Stevens heads up field and romps for 50 yards and all the way down for 22. Now gets set for the most thrilling play of the game. Chuck Bettinari kicks off for the Eagles. Lynn Shadnoy gathers it in on the seven-yard line and heads up the middle. Blockers form, and the former Michigan State All-American sprints through the entire Eagles team for a sensational 93-yard gallop. The conversion is good, and the Steelers take the 7-6 lead. In the third period, the Pittsburgh crushing offensive machine begins to roll. Van Rogel smashes for a four-yard gain to the Eagles' 23. There, the passing magic of Jimmy Fink strikes pay dirt as he connects to Ray Matthews for a Pittsburgh touchdown. The conversion is good, and now the Steelers forge into the lead, 14 to 13. The two teams battle back and forth for the remainder of the quarter. Then in the fourth stanza, Pittsburgh begins to roll. Van Rogel picks up three yards to his own 47. From there, the aerial artistry of Jim Finks takes effect. He drops back and fires a long aerial into the waiting arms of Albie Nickel, who goes over for the touchdown. The extra point is good, and now the Steelers get that confident feeling as they take a commanding 21-13 lead with only minutes left in the game. That confidence, however, is soon forgotten as the Eagles come charging right back. Benick now in at the quarterback slot, fades back and drops a long aerial into the arms of Harry Grant, and the Eagles are on the Steelers' 17-yard line. Eagle again takes to the air, and again Grant is on the receiving end. This time he travels into the end zone for the touchdown. 
The conversion is good, and now Pittsburgh leads by only one point. After the kickoff, the Eagles get possession, and in a race against time, again take the offensive trail. Eight pitches, and Walston receives for a thrilling 40-yard play that carries to the Steeler 15. Here the attack stalls, so the magic kicking boot of Walston splits the uprights for his third field goal of the day, and the Eagles lead 23 to 21. Moments later, Walston boots his fourth three-pointer, and the Eagles capture a sensational victory over the Steelers, 26-21. Forbes Field in Pittsburgh was the scene as the Washington Redskins and the hometown Steelers went at it before more than 22,000 football enthusiasts. The game is not yet two minutes old when Pittsburgh is forced to punt. Pat Brady's kick sails upfield. Washington's Johnny Williams takes it on the 37, breaks for the sideline. At the 40, Williams reverses his field. And the rookie Redskin romps over the reservation for a touchdown. Eddie LeBaron makes good the point. Washington leads 7 to nothing. Washington opens up early as Sammy Baugh pitches out to Harry Gilmer. And Gilmer winds up his right arm and lets one fly. Hugh Taylor takes it in stride but is dropped on the 10. Taylor fumbles but the Redskins' Gene Brito recovers and adds a three-yard effort to the play. From one yard off, Leon Heath smacks into the middle of the line and goes over for the Skins, and Washington leads Pittsburgh now 14 to nothing. Pittsburgh gets back in the ball game as Jim Finks passes to Albie Nickel for a score. The Steelers also chip in a field goal, making the score read 14 to 10. Watch this play closely in the second period. The Redskins are in possession on their own 14-yard line. Eddie LeBaron fades to pass, but Pittsburgh's George Hayes tears, steals the ball out of LeBaron's arms. Hayes runs the remaining distance into the end zone, and the Steelers have come from behind to assume a narrow 17 to 14 advantage over the Redskins, and that's the score at halftime. In the fourth period now, the Redskins are deep in their own territory and trying to get out of it. Choo-choo Charlie Justice passing, but the Steelers throw the switch on Choo Choo's pass as Ed Kissel intercepts on the Washington 36. From there, Pittsburgh's dynamite duo swings into action as Jim Finks and Albie Nickel blast the Redskins out of the lead again with a flawless airborne tally that makes the score read 24 to 21 Pittsburgh. Near the end of the game, the Steelers are forced to punt. Pat Brady gets it away. Little Johnny Williams gathers it in on his own 26 and gives the Steelers a mighty fancy run for their money before they gang up on him on the Pittsburgh. They say that big things come in small packages and the Redskins will certainly agree as little Eddie LeBaron lofts a long aerial downfield that's taken by Hugh Taylor for a game-winning score as the Redskins pull a 28-24 victory out of the fire. This is Bill Campbell pinch hitting for Harry Wismer and the first stop on the Pro Highlight Parade is Comiskey Park, Chicago, where the Chicago Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Steelers meet in a thrilling National League football game. The first period featured plenty of heads-up ball, but neither team could make the scoreboard. However, in the early moments of the second quarter, with the Steelers on the Cardinal 47, Jim Finks connects to Lynn Chadnoise, and the former Michigan Stater is out of bounds on the 19. Jim Finks in the quarterback slot, calling the signals from the tee, keeps the ball, then fires a high-velocity bullet pass, which again hits Chadnoy, only this time to ring the bell for the first score of the game, and the Steelers go ahead 7 to nothing. The Cardinals try to retaliate, but the attack stalls, and they are forced to punt from their own 25. Frank Trefuca sends the ball spiraling downfield to the Cardinal 30. Ray Matthews, a former Clemson gritter, takes stock of the situation and his anxious feet keep a date with the goal line as he goes all the way for another Steeler tally. The conversion fails, but the Pittsburghers drive to a third touchdown seconds before the end of the half, and the halftime scoreboard reads, the amazing Steelers 20, the Cardinals nothing. Early in the third quarter, the boys from the Steel City really show they mean business as Sphinx starts out from the Cardinal 38. Now watch this. About to be stopped, he laterals to Fran Rogel. Rogel makes it to the eight. Then he tries a lateral to George Salama. But the burly end bobbles the ball. In addition to taking an illegal pass, 
and it's now first and goal to go. The ground forces can't seem to make the grade today, so it's to the air once again, as a Jim Fink's pass is pulled down in the end zone by high-jumping George Salima. The extra point is good, and the Pittsburgh Steelers build up a lead of 27 to nothing over the embarrassed Chicago Cardinals. But the lads from the Windy City start the goalward breezes blowing as a Don Panciera to Cliff Anderson pass moves the pigskin to the Steeler 33. Let's keep a good thing going is the motto of the Cardinals as Panciera pitches a homeward strike right down the middle into the waiting arms of Ollie Matson. The conversion is good, and the Cardinals hit the scoreboard with seven points, much to the delight of the local fan. After the kickoff, the Cards recover a Steeler fumble, and as they try to take advantage, here's a play we want you to watch. Panciera fumbles, and the bounding ball is picked up by Lou Ferry. Yet the 243-pound tackle looks more like a speedboat as he skims right along for a 71-yard TD on the first play of the last period to put the Steelers ahead 34-7. to But you can't keep a good man or a good team down as the Cardinals again, featuring the panciera matson combination, momentarily stopped the show with a 41-yard payoff pass. It's now a 34-14 ball game, and as the saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. The cards rapidly drive for another score, and with two minutes left in the game, they trail 34 to 21. Taking possession on an exchange of punts, the Chicagoans go to the Steeler 47 on a Panciera pass to Charlie Treppy. On the next play, the Cardinals' Panciera lets loose a long aerial to the five, where Matson once more gathers it in. Holly shakes off a nearby post the final score of the game. The Steelers defeat the Cardinals 34 to 28 for their first league win and topple the cards into a three-way tie for second in the American Conference. Better than 25,000 fans were on hand as the dark jerseyed Redskins came onto the field in the nation's capital to face the Steelers from Pittsburgh. Midway in the first period, skins ball on the Steeler 45. Leon Heath gets a pitch out, and the old mule train from Oklahoma barrels to the Pittsburgh 33 in a 12 yard pickup. But the Steeler defense hardens, and George Buxar attempts a 33 yard field goal. It's Gladiel Dadrill. Dadrill races to pounce on the loose ball, scoops it up, and the 210 pound Steeler guard lumbers 50 yards to score for Pittsburgh as the visitors vault into a 7 0 lead over the Redskins. second period, the Redskins are once again on the war path, and once again, LeBaron gets set to pass, but the Steelers have other ideas. LeBaron loses the ball, and the Pittsburghers find it to put them in possession on the Washington 20. Next play, Lynn Shadnoy gets the handoff, cuts outside tackle, rips away from several tacklers, almost gets into the clear before he is pulled down on the Redskins 14. The Steelers fail to advance on three downs, and fourth down finds ex-Stanford star Gary Kakorian set to attempt the field goal. It's good! And the Steelers break the ties. They lead 10 to 7 over the Skins. After the kickoff, the Skins are stalled. Nitty LeBaron goes into a hesitation act as he is finally getting a punt away. Keep your eye on Ray Matthews. He's going places today. Makes the catch, dodges through the entire tribe of Redskins, and gallops for the goal line. Arriving on his feet and feeling fit after a 70 yard run back that gives the Steelers a 17 to 7 halftime edge over the Washington Redskins. In the third period, the Pittsburghers come pounding back for more. Jim Finks fades and fires a pass to Alfie Nickel, who hustles all the way to the Washington 25. Fourth down field goal attempt is blocked, but a penalty gives the Steelers another chance. Watch what they do with it, as Ray Matthews on a perfectly executed fake field goal picks up 14 yards, necessary first down, to keep the Steelers in business. Three plays later, Fran Rogel bores across the white line, and the Pittsburgh Steelers now enjoy a comfortable 24-7 lead over the skin. Twenty-six thousand rabid National League football fans brave the elements of rain and wind at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh to witness a gridiron clash between the Detroit Lions and the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Detroit, working from the tee. Bobby Lane calling the signals, takes a handoff and needles his way through. A nice opening to the 32. The grueling ground attack for the Lions brings them to the half-yard line. And there, Earl Jug Gerard goes over for the first touchdown of the game. Two plays later, Bobby Lane decides to try for the long one. It's a nice 46-yard toss. But the catch is spectacular as Cloyce Box out jumps Jack Butler to add another six points to the Detroit total. Conversion is good. The Lions lead 17 to nothing. Pittsburgh takes the kickoff and immediately moves to the Detroit 45. Now it's Jim Fink's turn to perform some aerial artistry with L.B. Nickel on the receiving end of a 25-yard advance. Fink's crosses, bringing them to the three. Then fullback Fran Rogel fights his way for the remaining distance, and the Steelers score! Now for the play of the game that even had the Pittsburgh Wooters on their feet. Earl Judd Gerard takes the pitch out and jets on through the Steeler aggregation to go all the way for another Detroit tally. In the last 30 seconds of play, the Lions were on to a fourth touchdown, and the final reading of the scoreboard showed the Pittsburgh Steelers bowing to the Lions 31-6. Thus making it four straight wins for the Detroiters and tying them with the 49ers for the National Division lead. Before over 34,000 in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the front-running Cleveland Browns met the greatly improved Pittsburgh Steelers in one of the most important and exciting games of the day. Once more, the Browns' great quarterback goes through the air, and by almost sheer magic, Dante Lavelli makes a one-handed stab in touchdown land to vault the Browns into a 7-0 lead. Moments later, the Steelers are backed up against their own goal. Here's the most important play of the game. On third down, Jim Finks attempts to pass. But the Browns' George Young bolts through to slam Finks to the turf, and Cleveland picks up two valuable points as the quarter ends. At the start of the second quarter, Luke Rosa adds three more points, and the Browns lead 12 to nothing. Increasing the tempo of their attack, Graham finds an open road, and there he goes down the sidelines for 20 yards and a first down on the Steeler 27. When the attack stalls, Lou the toe grows up, boots home his second three-pointer to boost his season's total to 14, one more than the old weak mark, and the hard-driving Browns take the 15 to nothing lead as the half ends. The third period finds Cleveland aiming to increase their lead. Ken Carpenter takes Graham's screen pass, rolls down the sidelines for 26 yards to the Steeler 35. Automatic Auto then uncoils his throwing arm and whips a nifty 30-yard aerial to Dante Lavelli for another Cleveland touchdown. Rosa converts to make the score. Browns 22, Pittsburgh nothing. But that scoreboard doesn't scare the Steelers after the kickoff. Jimmy Fink sparks the attack by hitting Albie Nickel for 13 yards to the Cleveland 33. Eating up the distance in one big chunk, quarterback Fink floats a long high pass to the goal line. Ray Matthews wraps it up, and the Steelers enter the scoring column and now trail 22 to 7. Not long after the kickoff, the Steelers are once more in possession. Adding a little spice to their offense, Finks pinches off to Ray Matthews, who in turn fires a long pass downfield. George Salima takes it in stride and races down the sidelines and almost all the way before going out of bounds on the six. Three plays later, Jimmy Finks lofts the pigskin into the outstretched arms of Jack Butler. And now the score reads Cleveland 22, Pittsburgh 14. Late in the third quarter, Pittsburgh's Jim Finks again tries the overland route, but this time the Browns' Rex Baumgartner is ready and waiting to intercept and return the mail back to the Steelers' 24-yard line as the quarter ends. Immediately, Graham sets sail. Finding his receivers covered, Otto darts into wide-open territory to scamper all the way down to the three-yard line. Moments later, quarterback Graham piles over center for the touchdown, and the Browns increase their lead 29 to 14. It's getting late now, so the Steelers' Jim Fink says, let's go to work. Crossing over the middle, L.B. Nickel gathers it in to put the Steelers on the Cleveland 38. Shooting for the works, Fink fades deep and let's go with a long 35-yard pass. Ray Matthews is in the right spot to wrap it up for the Steelers, and now the Browns' lead has dwindled to 29 to 21. 
Late in the game, the Red Hot Steelers are driving for another score. Lynn Shadnoy swings wide to the left, cuts back, and off he goes on a 26-yard gallop to the Brown eight-yard strike. On the very next play, Jimmy Finks fires over the middle and into Albie Nichols' arms for another Pittsburgh tally. But time runs out on the fast-closing Steelers, and the Browns gain their second one-point victory of the year over Pittsburgh, this time 29-28, to and thus take over undisputed possession of first place in the American Conference. The full highlights camera swings back to the east in Pittsburgh, where the Steelers take on the Chicago Cardinals at Forbes Field in an American... Don Pensiera pegs a perfect pitch to Don Paul, who's all by himself in the end zone. And the Cardinals are right back in the ball game, trailing by just three points. Score, Pittsburgh 10, Chicago 7 at halftime. In the third period, Pittsburgh continues its passing parade with Jim Finks connecting and a 20-yard chuck to George Salama. Quick opening play finds mighty Mo Mojaleski moving through the Cardinals for 11 yards. With the hungry hometown rooters cheering for a touchdown, Ray Matthews starts around his right flank, but finds the area well patrolled by Redbirds, so Matthews changes direction, goes on a roundabout route all the way to the Chicago 3 as the third period ends. From one yard out, Jim Finks on a quarterback sneak pushes the pigskin across as the Steelers forge into a 17-7 lead over the Cardinals. The Cards reshuffled offense, takes the trick on this play as Pansiera's pass to Ali Matson is good for 20 yards. Sierra fades back to midfield and lets fly with a Herculean heave that drops into the eager arms of Billy Cross for a Chicago touchdown. But that's the best the Cardinals can do today as Pittsburgh holds on and wins 17-14 over Chicago. The New York Giants storm into Forbes Field, Pittsburgh, but only to be snowed under by both the elements and the explosive Steelers. On the opening kickoff, the New Yorkers are served in early notice of what is in store for them. Lynn Shadnoy takes the ball on his own nine-yard line and heads straight up the middle. The Steeler linemen bowl over the onrushing Giants like ten pins to clear the way for Shadnoy, who goes 91 yards with no one so much as touching him to give Pittsburgh the lead seven to nothing. A fumble by Kyle Rowe to the Giants gives the Steelers the ball again, and away they go with Ray Matthews carrying to the New York Six. Once again, Lynn Shadnoy is cast in the role of Mr. Touchdown as he streaks over left tackle to put Pittsburgh on top, 14 to nothing at the end of the first period. The Giants, with Freddie Benners on the firing line, take to the air to make up the deficit, but find that things are tough all over today as in skips Claude Hips to intercept for the Steelers in Giant territory. The Steelers' offense remains red hot as Jim Fink stokes the scoring furnace with a 22-yard heave to Albie Nickel, and Pittsburgh pulls away to a 21-0 lead over New York. Later in the second quarter, a pass interference penalty puts the Steelers deep in the land of the Giants once again. Then Jim Finks pours more coal on the fire with a six-point pitch to Ray Matthews, giving the Steelers a stunning 28-to-nothing halftime advantage. In the second half, Pittsburgh continues to press the attack with Jim Finks firing a 35-yard pass to Shadnoy, who's hauled down on the New York 25. The Steelers wage a relentless aerial assault as Jim Finks sinks the Giants deeper into the hole with a payoff pass to Dick Hensley that puts Pittsburgh in front, 35 to nothing. The New Yorkers revert to form on this play with a wild display of fire horse football. It's Tom Landry on the tossing end of a pass to Bill Stribling, who goes down but bounces up quickly. When the Steelers hem him in, Stribling laterals to Joe Scott, who when collared, laterals back to Stribling, and the lanky end streaks goalward. Spilled in the five, but scrambles up and dives across to put the Giants on the scoreboard, but on the short end of a 35-7 count at the end of the third period.
In the final period, and for the fourth time in the game, a touchdown toss by Jim Finks rained through the Giants' umbrella defense. It's Dick Hensley completing the 60-yard effort that makes the score read 42-7 in favor of the Steelers, who can do nothing wrong today. Conversely, the Giants don't seem to be able to do anything right, as Tom Landry's punt is blocked by Dale Dodrill and scooped up by George Hayes, who goes across to put the underdog Pittsburghers on the cozy end of an amazing 49-7 score. The New Yorkers are just loaded with luck today, only it's all bad. Tom Landry's toss bounces out of the arms of Joe Scott and into those of Pittsburgh's Claude Hips, who's dropped, fumbles, but recovers in giant territory. Rookie quarterback Gary Kikorian replaces Finks, but you'd never know it, for things look pretty much the same as Kikorian heaves to Jack Butler, who makes a tremendous grab in the end zone for a touchdown. The Steelers prove to be real giant killers, closing their season at home with the biggest scoring parade of the year to bump the Giants out of the conference lead with a 63-7 slaughter. The surprising Pittsburgh Steelers, after a sensational victory over the Giants, journeyed west to Keysar Stadium to battle the powerful San Francisco 49ers. Shortly after the kickoff, San Francisco's Frankie Albert wings a long pass, intended for Gordy Soltaw. But Pittsburgh's Jack Butler steps into the picture to make a leaping interception to put the Steelers deep in 49er territory. After an incomplete aerial, Pittsburgh spark plug Jimmy Finks passes complete to Lynn Chadnoy, who bursts into the clear for a 19-yard excursion. Striking through the air, Fink steps back and fires another complete pass to Chadnoy, who goes out of bounds on the four. Rand Rogel then bores straight through center for the touchdown, and the Steelers take an early 7-0 lead. But the 49ers are quick to retaliate. Albert passes over the middle to Gordy Soltaw, who takes off on a 46-yard gallop before the Steelers' Claude Hips can drag him down on the 15. Rookie Hugh McElhaney then puts on a great display of running as he spins to the 10. After another six-yard pickup, Albert bootlegs beautifully, then passes to Soltaw, who's all alone in the end zone for the touchdown. Soltaw converts to tie the game at seven apiece. Moments after the kickoff, the 49ers are again on the move, but Albert's pass falls into the wrong hands as Howard Hartley makes a diving interception for the Steelers. Lynn Shadnoy finds a hold at left tackle and grinds out a first down on the San Francisco 45-yard line as the first quarter ends. Ray Matthews then takes a deep lateral, cuts back over right tackle, and bursts through the 49ers secondary to race 23 yards before Jim Powers brings him to earth on the 12. After three plays failed again, Gary Kikorian splits the uprights with a perfect three-pointer to give the Steelers a 10-7 advantage at halftime. Now get set for the game's most spectacular play. Finks passes short to Lynn Shadnoy on a screen. Shadnoy wraps it up, and off he goes on a dazzling 50-yard jump for a Steeler touchdown. Kikorian converts. And the amazing Steelers wallop the 49ers 24-7 to knock the once powerful team out of the title picture. With a tie for the conference championship swinging in the balance, the Los Angeles Rams meet the dangerous Pittsburgh Steelers before 72,000 at the Coliseum. Prior to the game, the Rams honor Bob Waterfield, their great quarterback for many seasons, who had announced his retirement and today captains the Rams in the battle for the final time. After a scoreless first quarter, the Rams begin to roll on the flat pass from Norm Van Brocklin to Vitamin Smith. That's good for a first down in the Pittsburgh 49. Another Van Brocklin throw an aerial, wings its way into a friendly port, with Skeet Quinlan snatching it and storming to the Steeler 15. Again, Van Brocklin heaves one that sticks in the midst of blue-fingered Tom Pierce, who sidesteps the Steeler and strolls across for the first score of the day as Los Angeles leaps into the lead at 7-0. 
Later in the period, a field goal attempt by Bob Waterfield is blocked by George Tarasovic. Steeler guard Dale Dodrill grabs up the ball and races away from the unaware Rams. Dodrill is well escorted as he scampers down the sideline for 81 yards before Dan Toller collars him way down on the Los Angeles nine-yard line. But in three plays, Pittsburgh can net only three yards, and on fourth down, a Jim Fink split falls incomplete, stopping the Steeler threat. Near the end of the half, the Steelers take over again, but not for long, as Dick Lane leaps in to intercept Fink's pass. Lane, who in this game established a new league standard with his 14th interception of the season, goes 42 yards to tally, making the halftime scoreboard read 14 to nothing in favor of the Rams. In the third period, the Rams run into some of that same trouble as a Waterfield toss is swiped by Daryl Hogan, who returns 15 yards and tumbles into the end zone to put Pittsburgh right back in the game at 14 to seven. After the kickoff, the Rams come roaring back. Van Brockton lobs a short screen pass to Elroy Hirsch that's good for 14. Then Van Brocklin, with some fine faking, shows how he won the National Football League passing championship as he rifles another bullseye to Hirsch. Then Mr. Goofy Gams puts on a fancy display of his famous and fabulous footwork as he struts past the Steelers to score for the Rams, giving the Los Angeles 11 a 21-7 margin. next time they get their hands in the ball, the Rams go on another rampage with Norm Van Brocklin firing to Pierce, who fights for a first down in the Pittsburgh 46. Then Dan Toller, who captured the league's ground-gaining title, takes over and gives the hog hide a 19-yard ride that goes to the Steeler 10 as the quarter ends. Two Brown plays failed again. Then Van Brocklin stuns the Steelers by passing crossfield to Tom Pierce who wraps it up in the end zone for a touchdown. Score, Los Angeles 28, Pittsburgh 7. The Steelers, though, are still to be reckoned with, as evidenced by this pass from Finks to Nickel that covers 45 yards and winds up on the Rams 35. Fran Rogel slices over his left tackle for eight more yards. Jimmy Finks then returns to the firing line and he hits the mark as Dick Hensley takes it for the first down on the 15. Another pass by Jim Finks, this one to Captain L.B. Nickel, is good for the final score of the game and the season for Pittsburgh as they lose to Los Angeles 28-14. With their victory, the Rams gain a tie with the Lions for the National Conference crown, which will be settled Sunday with a playoff in Detroit. <laughs>